you do kind of feel sorry when you see a white rabbit on brown grass. <laughs> you, you kind of think, oh man, you should, you should have changed color faster. If you're from Edmonton, then you've likely seen lots of rabbits around. More specifically, you've probably seen a white-tailed jackrabbit, which appears to be in great abundance in Edmonton. I think I see one over there. I love these adorable creatures, and because they're brown in the summer and white in the winter, I wondered how climate change was going to affect them. So, I brought this question to the team, and we decided to ask John Acorn, the nature nut, to learn more about this. So I'm John Acorn, I teach in the Department of Renewable Resources. My uh, background is in the scientific study of animals, you know, ecological, taxonomic, things like that. I would say maybe there's 20 or more species that we could regularly, regularly expect on campus. There are also quite a few um, mammals active on campus. The red squirrels are the most common, but of course the white-tailed jackrabbit are, are obvious to a lot of people. So, so the, the concern that maybe they'll get out of whack with the, with the seasons and, and you'll have white hairs on a brown uh, background or, or brown hairs on a white background and so on. Uh, is that a concern? Well, it's always sort of been a concern because of course the snowfall is, is unpredictable as well. A special characteristic of hairs is that they molt their fur twice a year, in autumn and in spring, to better blend in with their surroundings. This is a result of phototropism, changes which occur in organisms in response to changes in source of light. As daylight decreases in length, the hair shuts off pigment production in its fur, so any new fur starts to grow in white. Then, as daylight increases in length, pigment production starts to kick in again, and fur grows back brown. So, we want to know, as our climate gets warmer and our winters get shorter, how will this affect these rabbits? Will it stop them from blending in from their surroundings and avoiding predators like coyotes? I think it's actually kind of a tricky question. The white-tailed jackrabbits are unbelievably fast. I mean, they can really run. And many people have suggested that their, their speed is, it's not about getting away from coyotes, because coyotes can't run that fast. It's probably more a matter of the fact that they evolved with a North American cheetah in the deep past, in the ice ages. And the cheetah is now extinct. So the rabbits are way faster than they need to be. A lot of people forget that the, that the process of adaptation is ongoing. And you know, it's not that, that organisms are, are set and they just watch the world change and go, oh no, it's changing. I'm not saying I'm not worried about climate change and you know, anthropogenic causes and so on. Of course, that's, that's, a, that's a, bi a big concern. But there's certainly some species that will do better, at least with moderate climate change. And there's lots of species that can adapt. But you do kind of feel sorry when you see a white rabbit on brown grass. <laughs> you, you kind of think, oh man, you should, you should have changed color faster. So after talking to John, it seems like white-tailed jackrabbit populations in Edmonton are going to be okay. Mostly because modern predators just can't keep up with them, so camouflage isn't really a big deal. Does that make you feel better about it? It definitely makes me feel better for the white-tailed jackrabbits, but I'm still really concerned about other animals, because how are we supposed to know how climate change is going to affect them? I hate to, to say it about my favorite science, but ecology is really hard to predict sometimes. I mean, we've, we've had a long history of, you know, people studying mammals on this campus and the fact that there's so many sort of unanswered questions surrounding these jackrabbits, that's a good indication that there's still some work to do. Biodiversity loss is a big issue globally and there's lots being done to monitor it. Here at the University of Alberta, we have the Alberta Biodiversity Monitoring Institute, which looks at wildlife populations throughout the province. And they've actually developed an app called Nature Links, which allows citizen scientists like me and you to take pictures of local wildlife. And with that photo, it's tagged with location and time information so that scientists can track wildlife populations throughout the province. So if you see a white rabbit on a brown background, don't worry, take a picture. <laughs> the, the next time that you see a white rabbit on a brown background, don't feel bad, just <laughs> <Are you> lost. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm sure I have a good one of that. <laughs>